Okay, it is time to put the pen to the paper and do some drawing here in this video brought to you by Squarespace. Today in this video, we're using the Rotring Isograph 0.35. I actually ended up switching Rotring Isographs halfway through the video. Um, we're doing three drawings, okay? Halfway through the first drawing, I switched pens. I switched from my trusty old 0.35 Rotring Isograph. Look, I, look, mm. Every, everyone who's ever used one of these technical pens knows that they are kind of the most finicky pens out there. They, if any pen is going to just randomly give you some, some problems, it's going to be, it's going to be one of these pens. They have like the tiniest little parts. They have the little shakers that, I mean, you're pretty much drawing with the tip of a hollowed out needle, right? And anyways, for the, for the longest time, the, po the reason why the 0.35 was my favorite size of Rotary and Isograph, I I Isograph to draw with was because this is the size of, out of all my um, Rotrings that gave me the least amount of problems. But now I had my fill. I mean, I had just finished soaking the tip in uh, water for a while, like a few days, and I thought, hey, now, you know, it should be good to go. I've done everything I know how to do, um, but it was still like, either it flows too much or too little or stops completely. I think finally what I'm gonna do is order one of those ultrasonic cleaners and uh, hope it doesn't completely destroy the pen nib. Thankfully, I I had a spare rotring, you know, it's just part of the trade of being a, a guy that, you know, reviews pens and stuff like that. I had a spare because of that video I did recently where I was comparing a bunch of different um, technical pens. I had a spare 0.35 Rotring that I switched to and it was brand new and oh, did it work so good because it's pretty much fresh out the box and I haven't been using it for years. I mean, the other one, it, 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 it served me well. I probably used it for I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if I had used it for five years or something, which probably isn't. I think if I can get it cleaned up really well, I mean, if you look on online, there's like Rotring cleaning fluid, and I probably haven't really exhausted all of the, uh, really what you're, you know, the way you're supposed to clean it. Really all I have ever tried is, uh, soaking. I, I fill up like a little shot glass and I put it, I just, I take off the nib, I disassemble a little bit, and I soak it in there for like two or three days. And it seems to work better. But, you know, ask anyone who's ever used these things professionally, and they're like, oh, yeah, you got to do um, regular scheduled preventative maintenance and cleaning on these things. And I always resist. I was like, no, I won't. I refuse. You know, that sounds boring and bad. But, uh, you know, I think it finally caught up with me with that one pen. And, uh, you know, something probably similar, much more frightening and similar will happen with my teeth before too long. I should, I probably should uh, go to the dentist soon. I don't want to think about that though. All right, just a couple of notes on this drawing. Uh, it went well. I enjoyed it. I liked the end result. And I think it took about an hour to do. I was going pretty fast, pretty loose, pretty scribbly, but still enjoying um even even though it was loose and fast and scribbly, still enjoying the amount of detail that I could put into it. There's a nice balance there, I think. Now let's take a little intermission here to do a small doodle in a square space. You can use Squarespace to buy a domain, host it, and set up your own website very easily. They have so many different cool templates to choose from, and they all look good, professional, and polished, and then you can just take those templates and customize them to suit your needs. And there is a great deal of customization suited to your level of expertise with web design and computers. Maybe all you're comfortable with doing is dragging and dropping different little sections and blocks, resizing things. And you can do that and it will look really good afterwards. It will still look like a professional did it. But maybe you do know a little bit of HTML or something. And there's still a place for you to plug that code in if you want to. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash peterdraws for 10% off your first website or domain. 
All right, back to the drawing. Here's two more drawings for you. But um, what about what about all of you? What have you been up to? Anyone pick up any cool hobbies in the last year or so? Or kept on doing any cool hobbies? Anyone into chainsaw carving? I only asked that. That's the first thing that has popped into my head because I can hear someone outside using a chainsaw. They're just really, really going at it. I feel like to get into chainsaw carving, you have to be in some sort of job that uses a chainsaw already. Like, I guess that's called being, the fancy name for that is being an arborist or just some sort of landscape job. You just use a chainsaw so much that you find yourself getting a little bit crazy and creative with the way you cut down trees or you're just bored waiting for the next tree to cut down and you start carving away at a trunk and you're like, hey, I think I could really you know, carve away at some stumps some more. You just get so comfortable with that chainsaw in your hand that you're like, I just, I can't just, I can't wait for another tree to cut down for, to be able to use this chainsaw some more. I'm just going to go into the woods and find some more stumps and stuff to carve away at. And they always seem to make them into uh, bears or eagles, it seems like. But, uh, I mean, my... Uh, my sample that I'm drawing from is very small because I've only seen maybe five. But then again, there's also that type of carving, um, ice carving, right? Don't they sometimes use chainsaws for that too? Hmm. Also, have you seen those chainsaws where they have, there's like, there's like a whole side version of these chainsaw converse competitions where they have, they seem to have comp competitions on who can make the biggest chainsaws. It's like chainsaws where they're powered with like V8 engines and it take, takes like a whole team of big burly dudes to even just hold up the chainsaw, a huge engine. And then the bar of the chainsaw is like 12 feet long. And, uh, and then they cut through like a huge tree that's like four feet thick in like 10 seconds and, uh, you know, it's not practical for anything really, but, uh, it's awesome. feels like the kind of thing you might see at state fairs, county fairs, you know, next to the tractor pole, the destruction derby, stuff like that. Look, I gotta be honest. That's not like my, my typical scene. Like I don't go out of my way to go to like races and do car stuff or truck and tractor stuff. But I did go to a tractor pole once at the, um, North Carolina state fair in Raleigh. And that was awesome. I mean, I like engines, uh, mostly because I just like looking at engines. I mean, I have a whole folder um, on my computer where I've just saved pictures. Um, it's called, the folder is called machinery. And every time I see a picture of like machinery, stuff like uh, tubes, valves, like engines, like just that kind of stuff. I, I, I like the lines. It's inspiring to me. It, it, it feels good on my, on my brain, right? I like how it looks, but I went to this tractor pole, and if you don't know what it is, basically what happens is they have these tractors, like farm tractors, right? That's the basic, that's where it starts at least. And the basic idea is uh, they have these tractors that pull a trailer behind them, and the trailer has a weight on the back of it, and uh, there's like a some sort of gear or chain on the pulley system on the weight uh, on the on the trailer back there that the further you drive forward the further forward uh the weight moves on the trailer and then at a certain point the f the front of the trailer starts to dig into the ground so basically the general idea is they try to drive forward pick up as much speed and momentum as possible and then after uh, i don't know like a hundred feet, maybe, maybe it's only like 20 feet or 50 feet. Pretty soon this huge weight on this trailer they're pulling starts to make the trailer dig into the soft, soft, dirty ground. And cause they're usually in like a, you know, the middle of a, like a dirt arena, you know, where they do like the destruction derbies and stuff. The front of the trailer digs into the ground and the, the trailer, the, the, the tractor really starts struggling and uh, eventually it grinds to a halt and the competition is to see which tractor can go the farthest before they, you know, are stopped by the trailer digging into the ground. 
And uh, it's pretty awesome just because, you know, it's like he's seeing these huge machines being pushed to their ultimate limit. But at least at the tractor pull I went at, it started with normal, like, farm tractors. And then they started bringing out these crazy tractors that were built specifically for this type of competition where they had, like, these crazy engines on them. At first, they were just like, uh, like I, I don't know anything, actually, about engines or how to talk about them. But, like... They had like crazy like V, they're like double, triple Hemis. You know, I remember that word Hemis, but it's like you see like in like racing movies, you know, like this the, the race car engines with like the exhaust things coming out the sides and stuff. You take one of those, but they would put like three of those on the front of a tractor, right? And then they would floor it. It was so loud. There were flames shooting out the side. And of course, they would put all this hard work and energy into it and still only go like 50 feet forward, but it was amazing. And some of the engines would like blow up. They were trying so hard, it was amazing. I don't know how people didn't get hurt. You know, it's just the crazy s normal stupidity st kind of stuff that happens at fairs, I guess. But there was even, <laughs> this is the kind of thing they pull out at the end, a couple of, a couple, I'm getting out of breath just talking about it. Cause it was awesome. I gotta admit it was awesome. There was even a couple of jet, jet engine powered ones. I'll go watch that again any day, any day of the week. Really. It was so loud. I had to plug my ears. Yeah, I, I would watch that again. I, I'm not going to pretend that wasn't cool. I feel like it's kind of like, I feel like it's kind of stereotypical, you know? Like, oh yeah. Go watch trucks. Do truck stuff. Be loud. You know, not really accomplish anything. But uh, it was cool. And hey, you know what? I'm not afraid to admit it. I do like big trucks, and I'm not talking about big pickup trucks. I'm talking about, like, excavators and big dump trucks. I'm talking about, like, Caterpillar, Lieber, big things with, like, tank treads and stuff that can pick up a whole normal dump truck size worth of dirt in their bucket with one scoop, right? I don't know. It's just something exciting and awe-inspiring about the levels of engineering that some... Some people have done. Oh, it's it's cool, okay? Sometimes I don't take a minute to get all excited about how, how cool big machines are sometimes, but it is cool. And, you know, it's probably good that I haven't actually done this and fallen, followed down this path, but I will admit that there are times in my life where I've wondered, you know, what career path could I go down? What decisions could I make so that uh, I could spend more time around Big machines, you know, whether it's down in the depths of some massive, uh, you know, tanker ship around those massive engines they have that are like five stories tall. I like to daydream about it, but it'd probably be actually a miserable experience down there. Or driving those big Komatsu dump trucks that were, were the just the wheels are twice as tall as me. It's nice to it's nice to imagine, but I mean, maybe I would like it. It's a solid job where I don't have to wonder about what I should do for ne each next video. You just, hey, clock in, clock out, drive big, drive big trucks. I don't know. It actually does sound nice. Hmm. You know, maybe I should be an industrial designer. All right. Here's the plan then. Uh, I will keep making videos to try to hold me over until I can finish um, learning enough 3D programs and going to college enough so that I can design my own big machines and sell them and get them licensed by some other company. And there will be some sort of machine on treads or massive wheels twice as tall as myself for, uh, you know, well, I mean, it, it'll probably take a little bit of a little bit of a moral hit because these machines will probably be used for some sort of something like mining or, you know, deforestation, you know, as these machines usually are used that are kind of bad for the environment. But um, maybe there is some something that's good for the environment that these machines could be used for. A huge machine that can plant like a thousand trees at once or something or like a glacier glacier making machine. Hmm. I have to think about it. I just like machines, that's all. Okay. 
I'm going to go now. All right. All right, goodbye. Let me know what you think. What's your favorite machine or not machine? What's your favorite tree if you don't like machines? I like trees too, okay? I'm a big fan of trees. Vines, flowers, ferns. You know I like that stuff. All right, goodbye.